Hello friends, welcome back to this channel. Today we are embarking on a pilgrimage to Vrindavan. As pilgrims, we woke up early and began our journey. Visiting Vrindavan has been on our minds for quite some time now. And with God's grace, we are finally able to make this trip a reality. We planned to begin our journey at the crack of dawn, but due to my mischievous children, we ended up leaving at 6 am instead. Keshu is currently asleep. The sun is slowly rising and appears as a tiny spot in the vast sky, almost like a bindi. Don't you think so? As a Hindu, we consider the sun to be one of our many powerful gods. He watches over us, wherever we may be, on the road, in the car or on the earth. Looking at the sun always reminds me of an anecdote from our scriptures where the sun god bestowed a powerful son to Mother Kunti named Karan. It's unlikely to find someone as generous as him in this world. Perhaps you are already familiar with him, but I won't delve into details and the risk becoming tedious. We are bringing along our Sham Sundar and Havisha would like to hold him. Harika is also bringing her little Kanha and she prefers to rest in her Nani's lap. If you leave early, you will encounter less traffic. During the early hours of the day, it is not unusual to come across deserted roads such as this, which provide an ideal opportunity for driving. There is a mountain in the Aravli range that obstructs the path to Vrindavan or New Delhi. In order to make travel easier, a tunnel was built through the mountain. When driving through this tunnel, it's important to refrain from overtaking other vehicles and maintain a speed limit of 40 km per hour. I can't help but feel like I've seen this tunnel in a movie before. The sun is waiting outside this tunnel for us. Here he is, a nice round orb accompanying us on our journey. Here another toll booth is waiting for us along with the shiny sun. The weather looks favorable for the journey. I love it. Now it's 7 o'clock. It has been one hour since we started our journey. We are still waiting for our turn. Even though a fast tag has been implemented. We have come out of the city and are now on the highway. I always like this kind of road, especially highways without traffic. Highway always reminds me of an idiom. The idiom is my way or the highway. It means things must go as per my instructions, otherwise you can go away. Everything would happen according to my wish otherwise, not by any means, never, not at all. The sun is still with us, looking at us. This trip reminds me of my earlier visit to Govardhan when Havisha was at the age of Keshu. This is another toll booth. It was faster than the previous one. For Delhi, we should take the left. We are going towards Delhi. And somewhere on the way, we need to take a right for Vrindavan. We could not clean the windscreen in the morning. It's not that much clear. So we needed to sprinkle the water on the windshield. Wipers flicked and cleaned the sprinkled water. This is the brick factory where they manufacture bricks. It emits smoke, which contributes to pollution. As a result, it is located outside the city. Delhi is 231 kilometers away from here. That is the Aravli range which extends up to New Delhi, with a small part of it located on the JNU premises in the city. For Mahua, take the left. Chacha is riding a bike without a helmet. He is putting his and Chachi's life in danger. Here, there is no police to find. It doesn't mean you can violate the traffic rules. The traffic rules are not made for the penalty, but they are made for safety. Many people don't understand this part. This boy also doesn't understand. Havisha is currently enjoying the scenic view, but she appears to be feeling fatigued. We stopped here to refuel the tank and freshen up, killing two birds with one stone. Keshu was jolted awake as the car came to a halt. He had been feeling like he was on a swing, but now the motion had ceased, disturbing his sleep. The gentle swaying motion that had lulled him to sleep was gone all of a sudden. I asked if he needed to use the restroom right away. He had to move back to create space for me in the front passenger seat. 
the tractor is carrying hay for the animals this hay reminds me of two idioms make hay while the sun shines it means to make good use of an opportunity while it lasts and that's what we are doing we got the opportunity to go to vrindavan and we grabbed it we thought of making hay while the sun shone another idiom related to hay which reminds me is a needle in a haystack it means something that is almost impossible to find because it is hidden among so many other things these are brick factories the bricks are kept in the kiln and the smoke emerges from this tall chimney we call it a smoking chimney a brick factory consists of a kiln not a furnace kiln why not a furnace what is the difference between a kiln and a furnace in the case of a kiln we make things hard like bricks but in the case of a furnace we melt metals keshu is presently relishing the ride while being at ease nestled in his mother's embrace Currently we are traveling through a village it is apparent that there are numerous houses with thatched roofs in this area a truck or tractor carrying hay has broken down and stones have been placed on the road to indicate this the hay appears to have been properly baled and stacked preventing it from spilling onto the road it takes great expertise to do this correctly something i am not knowledgeable about we need to go to straight for govardhan and barsana the village of radharani they are situated in mathura district we are now just 1 km away from govardhan how exciting we are almost there this is the moment we have been waiting for this is the dan ghati temple in this region trees are revered as gopis and cutting them down is strictly prohibited therefore this particular tree wasn't felled to construct the temple there may be a misconception that this tree grew after the temple was built and penetrated through its roof However I would like to emphasize that this is not the case everyone is looking forward to the parikrama what do you call parikrama in english we call it circumambulation we hired an electric rickshaw and got into it havisha sat beside her nani while holding sham sundar originally we had intended to walk around govardhan to complete the circumambulation but we changed our plans due to my father's advanced age instead we opted to rent an electric rickshaw Earlier my father after negotiation struck a bargain with a rickshaw driver for a better rate. It seems that Giriraji is currently concealing himself behind those trees. Unfortunately our view of him from the rickshaw is obstructed, making it difficult to see him clearly. Although it is a mountain I refer to it as him because as devotee of Lord Krishna we believe that Giriraji mountain is Krishna himself. as described in the shrimad bhagavatam belief is key while some of me disagree and even mock this idea it remains true don't you agree while circumambulating in a rickshaw havisha and harika try to catch a glimpse of govardhan however keshu isn't quite familiar with the significance of spiritual life yet hopefully he will come to understand it eventually The water body before you see is known as Sankarshana Kund. Unfortunately, we didn't stop to take a closer look. However, it was not discussed beforehand with Rickshaw Wala Bhaiya. He values time greatly and prefers to finish with our group quickly so he can take on other pilgrims. However, I believe this would have been a beautiful spot to visit. I tried shooting the front view, but the camera wasn't getting appropriately focused. There are numerous canopies similar to this one in this area. They were built by past rulers prior to gaining independence. This is Radha Kund but we couldn't stay here for long. We have arrived at Mansi Ganga. The showers available here are specifically intended for pilgrims to partake in bathing. as it is regarded as a righteous deed a pious act or virtuous act in this location according to legend krishna used his powers to create mansi ganga when his foster parents expressed a desire to visit the holy river ganga this was done to save them from the trouble of traveling a great distance from their abode there are quite a few temples on the banks of this secret lake the mukharbin temple is the most prominent among them Currently we are at the Mukharbin temple. 
a few ladies are utilizing this facility others like us just sprinkle the water of manse ganga on our bodies because we didn't plan to take a bath over here we wish we should have done it havisha and harika were eager to get a closer view of the hallowed and revered lake manse ganga